Hi class, in this video we are going to talk about parallelism. So I'm signed in as DevOps. I'm going to do a command Ansible config dump and I'm going to grep for in any case upper or lower case fork. So by default, Ansible is allowed to fork five times. Basically, when we're running a task, when we're running a play that has multiple tasks, it can run five tasks at one time. And it can do that on different servers. So it could do three on one server and two on another. If you increase this number too much, it might bring your Ansible server down to a crawl. So you need to be very careful. Um, so basically, every time that you run a play, each task gets its own little script. If you look in the temp directory, when you execute a play, you'll see that the scripts are there. And these are the scripts that are sent over to the managed host and are executed on the managed host. So this is going to allow five of those scripts to run concurrently. That's the default setting. So I'm going to open up code uh, on my Ansible config directory, my Ansible working directory. And I'm going to look at script 8 and script 9. They're on D2L. So basically on script 8, I have two plays. Here's the first play. And here's the second play. I collapsed it. Um, here's the second play. So the first play, all it does is it runs another playbook. So I'm importing a playbook and executing that playbook. So let's look at that playbook. This playbook has one play with one task. This task just deletes everything so we come up, uh, so we clean up our server. So when we run script eight, everything is nice and clean. So I'm gonna go back to script nine. So I'm having this script do a bunch of things so it takes a long time. Because the whole point of this is to show you parallelism that you're running multiple scripts in parallel as opposed to multiple scripts in serial, one after the another. By, run, by using parallelism, it's going to cut down the processing time because you're running multiple scripts at the same time. So I'm going to do this on two machines, RHS1 and RHS2. I'm going to install a bunch of software, upgrade it if need be. If there's any change, in this task, it's going to notify these three, I'm going to call it handlers. So they're kind of like task, but they only get executed when the task that called them changes. So if there was no change in the task, these wouldn't be called. So in those notifiers, I have Restart firewall task, restart HTTPD, restart Maria database. So basically, if I upgraded these services, I'd want to restart them. It's going to trigger this anyways because I'm going to install it. So if there's any sort of change in this task, it's going to run all three of these. Let's just say it only updated the HTTPD, it's going to restart all three. If I was really not wanting to do that, I could create a separate task to install each one independently, then uh, or upgrade each one independently, then call um, that handler. But I'm just going to do all three at one time. So if anything, if any of these change, whether it gets installed or updated, these three, for the lack of a better term, task or handlers are going to be executed. So on this one, I'm going to make sure my firewall is in a, is persistent and in a running state. I'm going to make sure that my firewall uh, has HTTP open and it's enabled. HTTP is allowed through. It's going to be in a, per, a persistent state and it's going to restart my firewall. So it's going to edit my config file and it's going to edit the config in memory as well. 
I'm going to make sure that my web server is running. But if I did an upgrade, it, this would already be running. So if I'm running the old version of the software and I upgrade it, I'm still running the old version of the software. I need to restart the software for that change to take effect. So that's why I have that handler. I'm doing the same thing for the database. I am pushing out a, a test page. Basically, guys, this is the LAMP server. Linux, Apache, MySQL, Maria, um, and PHP. And this is going to be my handlers. And they're only going to run if there's a change in the task that called them. And in this particular case, there will be a change because it's installing that software. I know it will because I'm forcing it to be removed before that task even uh, runs. The reason why I'm doing this is to generate a lot of stuff so it takes a long time. Because what I want to do is play around with the, um, the fork. So I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to open up Ansible config. So I'm going to change the forks to one. Don't allow Ansible to spawn itself multiple times. I only want one instance of Ansible running. Normally, the forks are set to five, so it will allow five simultaneous instances of Ansible to run those scripts on those remote machines. Um, I'm going to force it down to one so I can look at the time. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back to my command prompt, go into my working directory, I've already checked the playbooks. I already checked playbook uh, script eight and nine. You go and do it just so you don't you know you don't have any typos. So there's a command called time and it will time how long a script takes to run. So I'm going to run this playbook with only one fork and see how long it takes. And again, this is a very complicated playbook being done on two machines. I just want to see how long it takes if I do everything in serial, one script after another. Remember, it creates Python scripts, sends them out to those remote machines, or PowerShell with their Windows machines, and then it executes those scripts. If I do everything in serial, it only does one at a time. The fork is set to one. If fork is set to higher number, it will do multiple uh, Python scripts at the same time. This is my first play, removing everything from RHS1. Now I'm running my second play, which is on script eight. This was a, this was script nine essentially. So I did another because it's a new play. I'm doing another gathering facts. Now it's running my handlers because there was a change in this task.
that took a, a minute and 46 seconds. So I'm going to go back and change my fork to 10. I'm going to save, hit Control S to save it. Then I'm going to go back and do that same play, which will, will remove the software, then reinstall it and see how long it takes. Now it's going to be able to run 10 tasks at one time. So now it's down to 52 seconds. So it essentially cut a third of the time off by allowing me to run 10 scripts at one time. It doesn't mean it's always going to run 10 scripts. It's going to run up to 10. So in this particular case, I had several tasks, but there wasn't 10 tasks per per play. So it, it did multiple tasks, one on S1, and one on S2 at the same time. So you can see that... Um, you can really get a benefit working, you know, with a bunch of machines at the same time if you increase your fork number. But if you do it too much, you could bring your Ansible server to a crawl. So you want to be careful with that and play around with the number. The default setting is five. So this is from our global config. Um, sorry, I'm inside my working directory now, so it's showing 10. So if I do this, outside of my working directory my global is set to five so what i'm going to do is go to my ansible config and remove this line altogether i want to save it I'm going to go back into the Ansible working. And because I didn't set it on my local Ansible file, my default settings take effect. Okay, that's it for this lab. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.